So let's look at an example here that makes it a little bit easier to understand my point. Let's look at a personal family situation first. So here we have a father and a son. Maybe this situation is very familiar to you. So the father says, you cannot watch any television until you do some of the work around the house. And the son says, I have some questions about what you mean. So here at the very beginning we can see my point about what is a question or when is a question not really a question. The father says, I want you to get some things done around the house. And the son is, well, I've got some questions about that. Actually, this is not a hard thing to understand. He's bringing it up as kind of an excuse to say, I don't understand what you mean. Can we talk about it some more? But actually he understands, it's not that complicated. The father says it's very simple. Television is conditional on helping around the house. So it's simple, let me keep it simple for you. You first you do some chores around the house and then you can watch television. And the son says, may I inquire as to exactly what I need to do, inquire? Inquiry means ask a question. And again, bringing up the question, what do you mean you want me to do something around the house? And the father says, the requirement includes cleaning your room and washing the dishes. So here the father's becoming very, very clear. Although I think the son already knows this, he's just using this as an excuse. And the son says, can you give me a reduction to just cleaning my room? In other words, he's beginning to negotiate. So here we have something again, in common but different. In common is that the son wants to watch a TV, but the TV watching time can be controlled by the father. And the father wants to get some chores around the house done and make the, make the boy be more responsible. So they have something in common, but they also have something different. And so the son's negotiating, he's trying to reduce his chore of responsibilities. He's trying to reduce what he has to do. He just wants to jump to watching TV would be best. And his father says, I think my offer is already very generous. I shouldn't let you watch any TV. So now the father gets his negotiation position out. His position is, you should do chores and no TV. And the son's position is, I should have TV and no chores. So we have kind of opposite positions here in the packages that they're looking for. And the son says, I see your point, but don't you think if I do all the work first, I'll be too tired to enjoy any television? So this is a question, kind of, right? He's saying, don't you think this is true? Or let me explain this to you. Don't you believe in this? But this is not really a question. And the father says, that is a leading question, a leading question. So that means, a leading question is you ask a question, but it really is not a question or it already has an answer. And the boy was saying, I'll be so tired, I won't be able to enjoy myself. And the father responds by saying, maybe I should include mopping the floor also. So now the father is going to increase the requirements. And the son says, stay calm, mom. I think your offer is very reasonable. I've got my mom and dad here a little bit mixed up, but you get the point. So in this very simple uh, situation, this very simple example, the father and son are negotiating and the son asks these questions. This is very normal of children, they ask questions. Well, do I really need to do that? And why do I want to do that? And why do you think I should do that? And shouldn't I do something else first? And these are not really questions. Although they sound like questions, they ask a question, actually it's the child trying to make an excuse to say, well, I don't want to really do that. So this is one form of questioning that we can do inside of a negotiation. Very commonly we see that. Let's look at a business example. Alex says, our main objection to your first offer is that it includes only two product types. And Fred says, what is your requirement? And Alex says, we need at least four product types. Okay, so now we're getting into the situation where there's a problem and now we're going to use questions to try to make the problems, issues, parameters more and more clear. So Fred says, how different do the designs need to be? So you want, you want us to give you more designs before you decide to buy. Well, how many designs do you want? And Alex says, 
We can leave this question open-ended for now. It really depends on you. Open-ended for now means we'll talk about it later. And Fred says, so you will let us create the design? And Alex says, yes. We don't have any objection to that. And Fred says, but this is not reasonable since we would have to spend a lot of time and money on new designs. You just reject and we end up with no agreement. And Alex says, let's not get confrontational. And Fred says, why is this model so important to you? And Alex responds by saying, we are not flexible on this. We must have at least four different models so our stores do not compete against each other. And Alex responds, so your strategy is to put different models in different stores. Now what we have here is trying to understand. Alex's company needs to make different product designs. Um, Fred is, uh, uh, Fred, yeah, Fred, Fred's company is designing it, right? Fred, but this is not reasonable. Yeah, Fred's company is de de designing it and Alex's company is selling it. Let me get that straight. So in this case, in this case, one company is buying a product and going to sell it to product, uh, consumers and another company is making the design. And the company that's buying is saying, hey, look, we need to get more designs. Uh, but Fred says, if we give you more designs and then you just tell us the design's no good like you already did, then we're losing money. We're making designs for nothing. So if we look back at this very quickly, what is happening here is that there's a question. The question is, why do we need to do this? They're trying to move forward to an integrative bargaining situation, but there's still some feeling that this negotiation could be distributive. So we're not really sure what's happening. You want us to make a design that's going to make us lose money. Can you tell me why do you need four designs? And Fred says, our counter offer is exactly the same as your first offer, only with more product numbers, more product models. And Fred says, what are the total number of units? And Alex responds, the total units stay the same. And Fred says, can you appreciate we have higher costs if we produce four models? So Fred is pushing very hard to have an integrative bargain. He's trying to find out why do you need so many model designs? Why must you have four model designs? Don't you understand that costs us money? And what's the point of this? And do you understand our situation? So he's pushing to, under to get that integrative going. How is he pushing on that? By asking these kinds of questions. And Alex says, yes, we can see that. What we can do to help you overcome, what can we do to help you overcome this problem? Now Alex asks a question, and by asking this question, he joins in the push for the integrative approach. That is a win-win approach. By saying, I understand, if you make more models, this will cost you more money. So tell me, how can I help you? What can I do to help you? And Fred says, if you could sweeten the deal, by increasing the total units, then our per unit cost would be lower. So Fred's coming up with this answer saying, can you understand my situation? Our cost is increased. I can do what you want, but my cost goes higher. Uh, let me explain to you. Can you do this? Can you increase your total unit uh, that you're going to buy? And that will help us to decrease our production costs, especially in our uh, per unit cost of production. So. In this way, by asking questions on both sides, we begin to move towards an integrative approach. If you don't ask those questions, or the questions are not really questions, just like the dad and the son, if they're not really questions, then you're really pushing towards a distributive win-lose negotiation situation. Alex says, the final offer I can make then is 500,000 units which is a 20% increase. So he's increasing the number of units to be purchased in order to decrease that marginal cost of production. 
And Fred says, that's not exactly generous. So this is not such a great offer. Alex says the product design issue is still unresolved. And Fred says, as I said, we would like to leave that up to you. And Alex says, but your offer is conditional on having four models. I don't think the product design should, be, should stay so informal. In other words, Alex is very worried he's going to make the design and Fred's company will reject it. He'll make four designs and they'll reject four. He'll make another four, they'll reject them. They'll make 10, he'll make 20, they'll reject them. This all costs money. And Fred says, we can revisit the issue after we have reached agreement on other details. Now, this is one way to keep the negotiation moving called log rolling. And log rolling is you keep moving forward, keep going, keep going. Don't slow down. Don't get stuck on one small issue. So here we seem to be stuck on this design issue. One side thinks it's very important. The other side thinks it's important too, but they don't want to talk about it right now. So what do we do? Let's not get stuck. Let's keep moving forward. Log rolling. Alex says, I don't like postponing such an important issue, but I guess it is reasonable. Of course, to him, it's very important. This is why he doesn't like to postpone. He doesn't like to put it off. 